welcome to the uh, film section podcast uh, episode. You know that one. Yeah. We don't keep track, do you? <laughs> we we kind of stopped on us after the first like set that we did. Well, uh, we kinda... on YouTube, the episodes are still numbered, so you'll know on yeah, you know, when you click the video, you'll know what episode this is. We you just don't. You, you just yeah. see a creepy like anonymous this YouTuber guy. go. It's episode twenty-two. <laughs> this guy he pays attention yeah uh, I have to. <laughs> uh tonight we're gonna be talking about uh top three directors and yeah. uh yeah yeah um so actually before we get into that r.i.p ray liotta like did you guys hear oh, about shit. that i didn't know that man oh yeah ray i did yeah, dude, 67 he died overseas on set. Like, <laughs> I don't want to make a. Here's the thing. I love Ray Liotta. I love like, trust me. Like, I grew up on him as an actor. Mm-hmm. But I have to ask this as somebody who's initially hearing this: Was it a heart attack? I don't know. There really isn't in any the- information yet about like the cause of death. It was. I think it was like he died in his sleep. Yeah, that's what it oh, said. That's what yeah. it said in the initial Talk- story. It says he died in his sleep. Yeah. Talk about one of the most intense actors of all time. Holy shit. He was shit. so like, good. When he, when he got in it, like, you know. In Goodfellas? Like, like, come that, on. That's awful. Oh, dude, yeah. That, yeah, that that's terrible, dude, to hear that. Um, Especially when you grew up, like, watching the guy, you know. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, so I, I just want to say that because, like, Goodfellas is, like, one of, I think, just the best movies ever made. And he's... By all accounts, he is the main character of Goodfellas. Like he's the one that's narrating the entire movie. Um, you know, and then also in, like movies like Identity, and he was in Hubie Halloween even like last year. Oh, dude, there's he's been in like countless movies over, yeah. over like the years. Yeah, uh, this man needs like two classics, and then says Hubie Halloween. Well, I'm I'm just saying like the range that that, that like he had like this guy would do something like Goodfellas, and then would also be in Hubie Halloween. Like this guy didn't. This guy was, you know, an actor that would do all ranges of, you know, the spectrum. Basically. Also in a very, very underrated 90s movie called No Escape. With oh, the I forgot about that. Yeah, really, that's a really good fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, like, but let me say, we can literally go on like all day just about Ray Liotta movies. He's yeah. been in that like fucking movies yeah. like you said uh he's an identity too that was like another that's a great movie movie. identity i yeah. think is such an underrated just amazing mystery movie um oh, yeah. so good. Good one, for sure um but yeah so favorite directors um i don't really know why i wanted to do favorite directors it was just kind of like i think there's a handful of either directors that have been around for a while that kind of need to get their roses or directors that I think in the last couple of years have shown that they're like, they're here to really make a mark. Um, And so my, uh, the first kind of group of directors that I want to talk about is, um, is directors that I think are, have been here the last couple of years and have, I think really kind of made like their stamp on the movie industry. And, uh, and that's the Safdie brothers. Um, They came out with, uncut gems in 2019 they came out with good time in 2017 they came out with heaven knows what in 2015 daddy long legs uh the year or the year or two before that and these guys have like created almost this subgenre of like anxiety just like anxiety and tension as a genre and i think like there's a lot of directors that know how to incorporate that sort of anxiety and tension and this like really frenetic kind of energy. But I think the Safdie brothers are like really the first ones that like have created this style that when you hear of a Safdie brothers movie, you know, you're going to get a crazy soundtrack. You're going to get a lot of real sounding dialogue with people yelling over each other, crazy mixing, intense close-ups, And you're going to feel sort of this like, like at the end of the movie it's like you're almost going to be like feeling like you have to catch your breath yeah they do they do uh have like the tendency to have those scenes where like even if they're like not showing the character doing anything just knowing that their heartbeat's going like Mm -hmm. a million miles per hour uh yeah like (laughs) uh especially with like uncut gems like 
so many scenes in that like there's there's almost nothing going on but just like through dialogue and like knowing like you know mm-hmm. how uh you know fucking deep adam sandler's uh character is getting like just like little like hints of dialogue or just kind of like oh fuck. yeah like it's like, this way of like they know how to set up a shot that like it's like as you said like even if nothing is really happening you still kind of feel like something is happening like you know yeah. like in uncut very gems, very subtle yeah like in uncut gems when they're in the um like in the jewelry shop and adam sandler is just telling kevin garnett about the gem that he has and there's this thing where like he you know he looks into the gem and he starts getting all these flashes and um of like you know his childhood and his career and everything like that and like a scene that in, <laughs> like a scene that in any other movie <laughs> would feel kind of like whatever is like it feels so kind of like it's leading up to something and then there's an um eventually that release where kg's arms break through the jewelry cabinet and so it's just like little things like that like they've really kind of created like all these little like nuances inside of their films that like no matter what you feel anxious you feel like something is about to happen or like the other shoe is about to drop yeah and also like they pull the best out of their actors i think and they're not afraid to like take a risk with like the actors that they get in their movies you know because like when you like hear about like the uh Oh, sorry. Like, I was just going to say, though, like, when you hear about, like, the synopsis for, like, either, like, Good Time at the time, like, you wouldn't really think Robert Pattinson. And especially with Uncut Gems, like, you know, if somebody described that story to you, you, you wouldn't be at the end, like, oh, it stars Adam Sandler. <laughs> and both end up being, like, as good as they can possibly be. So. Well, you, have have you heard how, like, Good Time was made? Uh, no, um, not really. I've only so seen it once. It was, um, Robert Pattinson saw a still image, which is like the movie poster for heaven knows what fell in love with just the picture. Hadn't even seen the movie yet, reached out to the Safdie brothers and was like, Hey, I want to be in a movie with you guys basically because of this one picture. The Safdie brothers were like, Oh, well, we're kind of working on uncut gems right now. We don't really have a, you know, a a character for you. And Robert Pattinson basically was like, I just want to work with you guys. And so they ended up writing this entire screenplay with Robert Pattinson in mind. Like that was that the movie was written for Robert Pattinson, basically. And um, I just think that was insane. And then Adam Sandler, again, they tried reaching out to Adam Sandler for 10 years to get Uncut Gems made. And it wasn't until like 2018 after Adam Sandler had seen Heaven Knows What, Daddy Long Legs, Good Time, that he was like, oh, well, yeah, I want to work with these guys. I, I like how Pattinson's response was like, uh, no, you didn't hear me the first time. You're making a movie with me. Uncut <laughs> what? Uh, no, 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 no. The... <laughs> no, no, no. Put that on the back burner. I'm Robert Pattinson. You might recognize no, no, you're gonna be, Twilight. You don't, under, you don't understand. You're going to be cutting me a script because that um, I will star in for you. <laughs> I think um, one, like one more thing about them, I guess, before we can go on to a different director, is um, they most of their movies are a lot of it is like improvised where like in good time, Robert Panson and Benny Safdie who plays Robert Panson's uh, like mentally impaired brother. Um, they were the only two that actually had scripts. Everyone else was kind of just like, all right, here's how the scene's going to go. Go, you know, kind of read off of what Rob is doing. So that whole, like, you know, like, that iconic scene that's shared all around Instagram and stuff where it's like Buddy Duris and Robert Pattinson where he's like, fuck you, you think you're better than me and Robert Pattinson is just like, I am better than you, is like, Buddy Duris is like basically like improvised that entire scene with Robert Pattinson, um, which is amazing how like, as you were saying, like they have like, they're able to bring the best out of people that have never even acted before. Have you heard of, Have you heard of the story of Buddy Duress? Yeah, he's in Rikers right now. Still, yeah. I think. Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah, he's he's been in and out of jail so much, like throughout his life. But Safdie, when whenever he gets out, the Safdie brothers always try and get him a gig. He was in Heaven Knows What. He was 
yeah. obviously in good time. Like he's they're the ones outside waiting for him when he like gets out. Like, in dude, the he's an amazing movies. actor. Like yeah. Buddy Duras is a great is actor. Yeah, I mean he, like you said though, he's like he's the mentally handicapped one. There's so many like that's almost like an archetype in these kind of movies. Like the kind of like. Well, Benny Safdie plays the, the mentally handicapped one. One of the directors plays. Yeah, the one mentally. of the directors plays the mentally handicapped. Oh, brother. okay, okay, okay. Uh, Buddy Duras is the one who, like, basically, and again, he has that whole long monologue about getting the acid and everything. Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. I remember. Um, yeah, so the, I think I I saw it only one time, but I was like, uh, I don't know, a few months after it came out on uh, VOD. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, it's it's a great movie. Um, I've I've said it a couple of times that like, personally, I call Heaven Knows What, Good Time, and Uncut Gems like the Chaos Trilogy, um, because one, they all feel like they're in the same world. They all feel like they could be happening at around the same time, um, and it, it feels like this like kind of spiritual trilogy that like all these. Um, crazy frenetic stories sort of all feel like they fit together. And um, so, yeah, if anyone watching this, if you never watched a Safdie Brothers movie, it, just do it. I mean, it you will be tense and anxious the entire time, but they just, they've created this sense of filmmaking that I think not a lot of other directors have really been able to create their own kind of subset inside of, the drama category inside of these like esoteric art uh art house films yeah um so yeah i don't know who's next with their favorite director but Corey, Corey. Uh, wait i'll go all right yeah, um all right so my top three aren't in any particular order like like when you said like oh who's your favorite director it's like eh, it's like probably like seven or eight of them like hold the top yeah. spot yeah not like who's like, like the I'll number one back and forth but... like yeah yeah and the three that i chose like none of them i don't think were in my uh top five movies so it's, it's kind of weird like i think a little differently about directing than like um Same. uh necessarily how the end product came out uh i'm gonna start though with uh robert rodriguez um and again, I'm speaking more of his uh, work in the 90s and early 2000s as... Bye, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's... Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. Yeah, I love Spy Kids. Kind of... that's, that's no shade. I love Spy Kids. Oh, no, 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 no. I would, you know, the first Spy Kids, you know. But I just mean, like, you know, late, like, machete kills and... You know what I mean? Like, not necessarily terrible. He hasn't like gone off the rails. I don't think yet. I think he, uh, motherfucker, just, just say from dusk till dawn. Well, he was one. Of, well, well he also I mean. did the All whole right, Desperado movies, trilogy too. I was gonna say like two yeah. movies in particular: the original Desperado and From Dust Till Dawn. I still think to this day, From Dust Till Dawn is the most like underrated like movie so of its kind. It's oh my god! I can go on all fucking. It's day I mean, that, that movie is is so good, and the bait and switch. Like, if you've never seen From Dust Till Dawn, the bait and switch that yeah. they do, like you know, two thirds of the way through the Brilliant. movie, yeah. where it feels like one thing, and it turns into something totally different. Like, it's expert. It's an amazing well, movie. If you don't know anything about it going in for the first uh, entire half of the movie, you think it's a crime movie about uh, two escaped convicts uh, kidnapping a family. <laughs> You yeah, know, and one of them, yeah, one of them, an unstable rapist. That's another crazy thing about this movie because I saw it. Uh, I want to say like eight or nine years old. Uh, mm-hmm. When I saw it, though, like I definitely didn't understand the context of that until like I got older. I just thought like, oh, Quentin Tarantino's character is crazy or whatnot, and, uh, and then like you grow up and it's like, oh, he's a fucking sick motherfucker in that movie. Yeah. But also, this was kind of a weird turn for George Clooney, too, who was, at this point, was still kind of known as, like, the the doctor from ER and, like, was, you know, this, like, dreamy guy for, like, Hollywood. And he's like, no, I'm going to play a murderer, basically. He's such an, he's such an underrated, badass character. Oh, he's so great. Like, I was just, like I was just saying um about Quentin Tarantino being, like, a basically unstable, like, murdering, like, rapist guy. Uh with George Clooney, he's just like like 
a really he's like clearly like the uh brains of the operation but he's like also like a very like Mm-hmm. smooth a very like smooth like fucking impatient kind of like badass character oh. um and i mean very unfortunately like like that's like one of the main themes of the movie is that like he knows there's no way that like his brother is gonna end up end up like being okay but yeah. he's like almost like in denial about it like until his eventual death yeah um another one though uh uh, to get off track with Mar- Once Rodriguez, Upon a uh, Time in Mexico is probably like is probably my my personal favorite uh Robert Rodriguez movie. I just there's something Mexican, about that movie Mexican, that I absolutely love. Are you a Mexican or a Mexican? Mexican, yes. I mean I mean Johnny Depp's character in that movie is is great, but so is like even Mendez, obviously Antonio Banderas and Selma Hayek are great in that. It's, I mean, even like uh, Enrique Iglesias in that movie where he has like the guitar case, like machine gun thing. It's, it's a great yeah, movie. It's a lot of fun. I mean, that's pretty. I mean, that's cool how they like basically weaponize. Like one's like a grenade launcher, the other one's like a machine gun. Um, no, yeah. what do you call it? I like that. I like the scene in that with Johnny Depp where he like, <laughs> he's looking for money on a uh, fucking Pete Marin. <laughs> And he's hide Teach Marin's hiding a lot of cash like in his eye patch yeah. inside of his eye socket or whatever. And he's like, Well, I suppose I should thank you for not sticking it up your ass. Then he's like pauses for a second, he's like, but on the other hand, to be careful. And then he like puts on a rubber glove. <laughs> yeah, no, he's so funny. And then there's like another part where again Johnny Depp's character is like talking to this kid or whatever, and the kid tells him some information or whatever. And he pays the kid. The kid's like, gracias. And Johnny Depp's just like, fuck off. And like, just like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just like little things oh, like that that Robert Rodriguez mm-hmm. like does with his characters. That's really funny. Or he gives, he gives the same like little kid like a gun later on when he loses his eyes. He's like, yeah. it's like see that motherfucker over there? Just kill him, man. Send him to fucking Broadway. Kill him. Yeah. It's great. It's or that scene when that scene when Ava Mendez shits in Johnny Depp's bed. Oh wait, oh wait, no, that's oh that's shit, that's a little wrong actress, buddy. Bro, I have been Probably watching this been trial been non-stop. Before. Don't even get me started. Literally, from from the moment I open my eyes to the moment I close my eyes is all Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. I've been watching I don't know, everything. Arresting bitch faced on like the videos is like just undoing so much goodwill that her face has done for me over the last 10 years. <laughs> Dude. Well, she's she always just like Oh my god. So not to get too into it because I guarantee we could be here for five hours just talking about it. But it, there's first off, I am Team Johnny. I'm gonna say that right now. Um but, if you're uh, not, if you're not yeah. then wrong with your brain yeah Yeah. um but it's just i mean today was like they had her back on the stand today and she just oh oh my Mm. god like oh my god it's there's this thing where like i know at one point like i thought she was obviously like a beautiful actress but then watching this trial she's just gotten like uglier and Dude, this, uglier and i think uglier. this trial has aged her several oh years oh my god yeah like, but like she looks like a yeah, she looks like an old like library like she's copying elaine her lawyers like yeah. fucking like oh yeah. Dress. Uh, yeah there is a there was one and they had a witness they had ellen barkin as a witness and she was like yeah, me and Johnny had a romantic relationship. And then, like, a couple minutes later, she's like, hey, I just want to say something. Me and Johnny had a sexual relationship. <laughs> and, then, and, then they were, and then they were asking her, like, did she ever see Johnny, like, be a fucking crazy dickhead? And she was like, uh, one time he threw a bottle at an assistant, a wine bottle at an assistant. And they're like, yeah, and like do you know that assistant's name and she was like pig well that's what johnny called the assistant pig (laughs) (laughs) well dude it was so funny because i think it was yes yesterday johnny took the stand it was either yesterday or the day before johnny took the stand i think it was yesterday and rottenborn which is one of amber's attorneys like kept trying to object and there was one time where he like objected and the judge was just like overruled 
and like Ryan Bourne was just kind of like pouting, and Johnny's just like, "You'll be okay." And then like <laughs> went back on to answer his <laughs> question, dude. Like, dude, some of the shit Johnny Depp has said on he's this a, he's a legend. Fire. Dude, like they were talking about like the bed dump incident. I saw this clip and he's like, because you know, like the way he talks, like he's like, well, their uh, dogs are very small. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that amount of poop could have come out of a dog that small. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, I just thought it was funny that somebody laid a grumpy in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word he used to a grumpy. <laughs> Oh, dude, he mocked, he mocks their lawyers, too, because, like, one of them slipped up and said plane twice, right? So Johnny was just, like, on the plane plane? Like, just, like, asked him, like, like on the plane plane? Um, no, it's, oh, my God, it's just dude, a great the best one. The best one was that video of, like, they kept objecting every, every time he answered. And there was one time where they're, like, where they asked him a question, and he pauses. And then he's like, oh, sorry, I thought you were going to object. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, okay, yeah. We got to stop talking about that. <laughs> okay. Back uh, to Robert Rodriguez. Um, another one, Sin City, uh, the faculty even came up oh, with yeah. that. I like that. Faculty um, is great. Yeah. Uh, fucking Grind, or his portion of Grindhouse. Uh, Planet Terror is a lot better than Death Proof. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, death, death proof. Some people like paint death proof as, as like unwatchable, but like I still oh, think it's like you know it's at least worth a watch. You know, you what guys. I mean? Guys, I only like Kurt Russell. All right, that's the only thing I like about that. Um, well, it's like otherwise, it's fun Kurt Russell. Was, otherwise, that was Quentin Tarantino's foot porn. Like, but, there's a lot of foot shots. Yeah. Planet Terror though was balls to the wall. Like, well, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that was, that was so much fun. fun. Planet Terror is so just, much fun. Yeah, it was everything like something fun. You know what I mean? Like a grindhouse movie should be. And um, fucking what do you call it? The Death Proof was just like the other side of that coin. It was like a grindhouse movie, but one that you know definitely it wasn't like a different. It was like a different like their grindhouse was like a lot of different things. And that I think Death Proof was a certain kind of grindhouse film. Death Proof, Death Death Proof that Planet Terror comedy, like, was the other kind. I mean, I mean, to to Quentin Tarantino's credit, it is definitely a, like a feminist movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you a know, little, a little you know, uh, <laughs> almost to the point where like the very ending is <laughs> like, uh, really, that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's like watching one. Of, it's like watching a grindhouse movie that's not horror. And like even has that like just the ending just it just stops like the thing happens at the end and then the credits roll yeah. like that kind of a I've seen endings like that to grindhouse movies that were in like similar um similar plots so yeah. it was definitely a grindhouse movie of its own but I definitely like Planet Terror a lot better yeah yeah and. And the spinoff to the first uh, Machete movie, the first one I thought was, you know, it, it's not per- definitely not perfect by any stretch, but I don't think it's I, not supposed to be. But, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it wasn't like, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it really was like a really fun movie to watch and Danny Trejo was awesome. Like, you know, yeah. basically gave you everything that you would want from that. Uh, maybe I was expecting a little bit more the first time I saw it, but it was, you know, yeah. still like everything that i would want like in that kind of uh in that kind of movie so again uh when i my like list isn't necessarily ranked again so just one of my like you know yeah. favorite directors that like if i saw his like even like i was not shitting on him either like if i saw his name on anything nowadays i'm still like obviously gonna watch so oh, yeah. maybe maybe that's the most uh, important uh credential for you know these lists oh yeah uh but yeah that's robert rodriguez Oh yeah, uh, mine. I don't know. I'm not like it's not a top three. Like he was saying, I'm just picking three directors that I really like. Um, mine is uh, actually before we get into this, I have two things. I bought this movie for twelve dollars. Everyone should probably watch it. It's pretty great. It's fucking Nick Nolte being awesome before his face got lost. 
Um, and don't talk to me like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, his voice was like kind of badass. Yeah. <laughs> Pour the cigarette uh, stuff over. <laughs> number, number two, Corey McAdoo looked at my picture and he was shitty and didn't fucking answer like an yeah, asshole. I, I sent you a fucking picture. And you even look. You, you fucking. You looked at it. and You didn't even respond. I've been sleeping uh, a lot lately. I don't give a fuck. That's no excuse. Wake up. Wake up and answer me. <laughs> That's no look excuse. at my picture. Look at my picture. God damn it. I don't want to hear about it. Oh, you're sleeping. Whip de do. Uh. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to fuck with you. Um. Mine is Sam Raimi. Oh yeah, and I guess like I don't know. Bringing up Sam Raimi now, I just dropped the uh, dropped the Marvel movie nobody likes because they don't like Sam Raimi or something. Uh, nobody likes. I don't know. So many people Thank told me they're like, I don't know. I don't like Dude, it. The that's majority. Crazy. That's only. I think that's only if you go into like deep holes on the internet because I don't know. Like it's IMDb or not a sign or a. Well, yeah, it's IMDb, but it's like Rotten Tomatoes score is like high and shit, and it's making a shitload of money. It's going to be considered like a hit, regardless of how many people on Twitter are like, you know, fucking, oh, this, you know, fuck this, this fucking sucked. Like, that's, that doesn't really dictate a lot of shit in the big this picture. Guy, this guy, he kind of revolution, he kind of revolutionized a lot of like the, the different kinds of camera styles and shit in movies oh, yeah. that weren't being done at the time. Like, the evil, the whole Evil Dead thing. Every shot in like any of the Evil Dead movies, like the way you see that shot, is like nobody does that. Nobody is doing uh-huh. that. Even did it like that in um Dark Man. And it's just his movies have a style that's so fucking cool, man. And the humor, just everything. He he is, and he, and he like kind of consistent too because. I don't know if people really shit on that Drag Me to Hell, but that wasn't a fucking terrible movie either. No, that's fun. Drag Me to Hell is so much fun. Drag Me to Hell was like, yeah, exactly. It was like... That was Sam Raimi going back to Sam Raimi after Spider-Man, basically. Yes. Yeah. And man, I don't even really have to talk about Spider-Man because Spider-Man 2, directed by Sam Raimi, is probably my favorite Spider-Man movie out of all of them. It's it's yeah. just one and of the best comic book the movies shit. ever made in general. Absolutely. Absolutely. The thing about Sam Raimi, like, even, like, his, like, you know, lesser movies, they're still, like, he's put, like, a fucking, like, you know, all this effort into it. Yeah. You know dark, I mean? dark he's a he's dark, a dark and fucking bomb, dude. And it's still, I think it's a fucking fun movie to watch. But he, he's essentially, like, a world builder, like, in all of his movies, like, you know, like, the tone, like, he's so good at that, like, setting, like, a, a certain tone and, like, incorporating it into, like, this world, like, that, because, I mean, his uh, entire, like, New York and the Spider-Man movies is, like, so much different, it seems like, than, uh, like, either of the other two universes, because it seems like it's a comic book movie. I mean, like, yeah. obviously it's comic book, yeah. but, like, it's the way people talk, it's like a comic book, almost, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, yo, you're it's right. It's very pulpy. Yeah, yeah, but it's like that's the intention of yeah. it. Like, and like those are that's the reason. Like, you know, like you said, Spider Man Two. It's arguably like the best Spider Man movie of them all. It's it's uh, like a scene. It's like a scene like when he's swinging through the city and he like swoops by a crowd of people and they quickly cut and there's like Stan Lee going, "It's Spider Man!" Like, well, yeah, that's dude, like, so comic booky. That's total comic book scene, dude. Dude, the very first crazy. one when uh, there's like a burning building or whatever, and the babies inside, they're like, oh, there's st-, like a fireman just goes, yeah. like, points up and goes, there's still a woman inside. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's dude. So that. It's totally, that's totally what it is. Yeah. Fuck You're it the awesome. one who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, yeah, he, dude, like, he revolutionized low budget horror with Evil Dead. Yeah, I mean, that like. Yeah. To think about what he did for the horror genre, for low budget horror genre, for people who who love film and want to make film and are storytellers, like he basically opened up the door for anyone that wants to do that. And like 
like when you hear about like the the scenes of like the yeah. camera that's like going super fast through the woods and stuff that's just sam raimi with a with a stick tied to his camera and he's just approaching running through a, the woods that's all it is approaching like yeah. a little canoe yeah. with a camera on it through the yeah. swamp like, I mean, can you all... imagine that well, like that had to be like going to boot camp making that first uh evil dead oh, movie when it, was i've crazy about, like... watched like behind the scenes and stuff where like that was oh, not a fun experience for anyone yeah. <laughs> they were they were saying like they were saying like that shot the way they did they're like oh we could just if we if we had like a dolly track but we didn't have money so okay. <laughs> i just went through the woods with the camera like <laughs> Crazy. It's crazy and the fact that like it's to this day i think that evil dead 2 is the perfect like horror comedy like i know like a lot of people will say like Shaun of the dead and stuff like that and i totally respect that but i think that evil dead 2 was able to blend this like thing of it's there's one scene that's gonna really scare you but the very next scene you're gonna be rolling on the ground laughing you know like and you it know kind of set the template for like for like fun insane like kind of horror movies like mm-hmm. evil dead 2 basically like set that tone like it's kind of created its own like little sub oh, yeah. genre i mean it's, i like um, i like scenes could like some like one scene will be really gory mm-hmm. and then the yeah like you were saying it blends very well and then like another scene will be some three stooges s comedy like yeah <laughs> i love it it's so good the, like the only movie i think that i've seen that's like similar in vain to uh evil dead 2 would be ironically enough would be house 2 um second story Oh shit! The second story. Yeah. Grandpa uh, comes back, gunslinging. Okay, with the dude, one of the dudes looks like fucking Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Fucking, yeah. uh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Bill Bill Maher is in that movie too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Bill Maher. Yeah. I dude, yeah, I actually, I yo, I actually I love that movie, and I'm pretty sure I saw it before I actually saw the first house. <laughs> it's it's good know, if you go in expecting like a comedy. Or house like, two is uh, hilarious, bro. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, the first one's more trying to be a horror sort movie. Of yeah. Horror. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, no, Sam Raimi is uh he's awesome. And I mean and I think like even when you watch like Spider Man two, like the scene with like Doc Ock and like the surgery room, that's a straight up horror short. Oh, yeah. Where, like his like, oh, quick, are going like crazy. Dude, a hand literally raises up from underneath the table with a fucking chainsaw, like mm-hmm. a fucking evil dead too, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah dude Absolutely. sam raimi is a goat yeah same uh also like what's the movie that he did? he his uh like skill is definitely all over the place not just superhero movies not just horror movies like you ever see um the gift with uh him oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i guess it could technically be considered a horror movie but it's like almost like a southern gothic like yeah kind of like almost uh like gritty drama as kind of movie uh, that one was yeah. actually really decent. They rip it apart in a Harold yeah, like, the the movie, but <laughs> this is the most confusing yeah, fucking like movie that. I've ever seen. Dude, those tits better be stacked. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, so hold on one second. We're gonna stop recording and then we're gonna start back up. All, All right. right. Um, All right. Well, us back to you. Okay. Uh, so. The next director I want to talk about is uh, is a director that I don't think I think he used to get a lot of praise and I don't think he does anymore. Is uh, is Tim Burton? Um, <laughs> like yeah. I think he's such. I, th- I think he went from being like everyone's favorite director, definitely every like goth and emo kid's favorite director, to now like no one talks about him. And it's like, I think, like, people are discounting just the movies that this guy has made or is a part of. Like, he didn't, think about this, he didn't even direct Nightmare Before Christmas, yet it's still called Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Like, yeah, people who don't bother looking that up, like, yeah. definitely like, it's always. It's not even his up. movie. Uh, 
I think yeah. I think what happened was Planet of the Apes. That's that's what happened to Tim Burton. Well, no, kind I mean, of. That was some good movies after that. Like I was watching. Like, like he still had some good movies after that. Like I was so last night I was watching Sweeney Todd, and oh, that's not a bad movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. Um, Big Fish is one of my favorite movies of all time, and that's Big Fish is my favorite Tim Burton movie. Um, like I, I think Big Fish is is probably one of the most underrated movies like ever. I never hear anyone talking about that movie, and it upsets me. Well, We're definitely gonna do an episode on that. Yeah, like movies like Big Fish, though, like that's that's definitely a skill he has is like bringing fairy tales to life basically mm-hmm. yeah. so that's that's essentially what big fish is like one like giant like like a story happening in like happening in like a child's mind basically like it's very like wondrous and whatnot oh yeah uh, definitely one thing one thing whether you're a fan of his or not like i don't think you could say anything about his visual style because he's, great. he's you'll never see like one of his movies that just like looks boring or bland mm-hmm. looking I mean, uh, like Edward Scissorhands, Tim Burton movie. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, a Tim Burton movie. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the first two Batman movies. Why am I not like the Michael Keaton Batman movies are Tim Burton? Like, I think it it It'll bothers be me that like because mainly because like the Alice wonderland movies aren't the greatest like i think people have just kind of will you know what i was kind of re-watching that and though it's not the best it from everything it's not I've, terrible but it's not terrible it's it's a lot closer to the book from everything that i hear that it's like way closer to the book than the gene wilder one was um but it's and johnny johnny depp impersonating uh michael jackson too kind of yeah you've definitely got like a wacko jacko sort of thing going on but it i don't know i just think like and especially again when you watch some of these movies like edward scissorhands i think is an iconic movie Um, oh yeah i think it's a it's a beautiful movie it was one of vincent price's very last film roles um, if not his, with your hands. <laughs> um, and then yeah, like as I said, like I was watching Sweeney Todd last night, and that's just that movie is so good. Did he? Did he direct Ed Wood? I think so, didn't he? I think I think he did actually. I think yeah. Dude, I fucking love that movie. I mean, he's he's. I think he's so underrated. <laughs> And I think people really should take a second and go back to, you know, his his IMDb and look at the movies that he made. And it's like, chances are this guy has probably made one of like your favorite movies from your childhood, you know. Yeah, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is definitely mine. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I used to watch that movie like any time I could. I mean, Beetlejuice. Like Beetlejuice is the shit. You know, Mars Attacks, which is such a fun movie. And yeah, he did great. he did direct <laughs> Um Big Fish, Corpse Bride, Alice in Wonderland, Dark Shadows, like he's Dark Shadows, so hey yo. Well, and I mean Dude, and he's got the there's no one. And he's got the Forget new Adam's Family games. series coming on Dude. Netflix. We'll do with Dark Shadows. Like, I always think of that one scene where he's, like, bonding with the uh, group of hippies around the bonfire. And, like, they're, ha- they're, like, genuinely, like, having a moment. And then he's, like, he ends it with, like, unfortunately, I must now kill you all. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was actually really funny. Um, But, yeah, so I just, I think that Tim Burton... I think your microphone came unplugged. We can't hear you, bud. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, there you are. There we go. Okay. Yes, now I can hear you. Um, 
but yeah, I think like just have a like Tim Burton like movie marathon and you will have so much fun. Yeah. Like yeah. watch like especially, uh Especially what? Especially like if like if you're into like visually like beautiful kind of like, you know, worlds, you know. Because even like his like the movies people like shit on like Willy the Willy Wonka one like it's still like a great looking like movie same thing with like the world built in the Planet of the Apes so sands like the ape suits yeah um, you know mm-hmm. so. and like even though his movies have this very like kind of goth kind of vibe to them they always kind of have happy endings like a lot of his movies have pretty happy endings um, yeah or yeah like usually pretty happy or pretty optimistic endings which is i think pretty fun except for sweeney todd that movie ended so That's, so sad. that whole movie um, is pretty uh pretty grim there yeah, yeah. But, it's just grim about a guy making but, cakes but yeah yeah um yeah so timber well i don't know like you, you so I, I don't mean to keep going on that but even with like edward scissor hands like it ends with him just uh living up there all by himself at the end so you know yeah uh, all right so i go now yeah yep all right uh i'm gonna go with uh tony scott uh if you don't know who that is he's was more prominent in the 80s and 90s he died in the mid 2000s um trying to think he's the brother of ridley scott and essentially like if you've never seen any of his movies he's like a fun movie equivalent of ridley scott where ridley scott makes like very serious dramatic like you know not saying he's never made like a fun movie before but tony scott's on the other side of the spectrum where he makes very like crowd pleasing like excellent like fun movies uh he directed my favorite or one of my favorite action movies in the last boy scout which is yeah (laughs) chris gets it um he's direct uh, all of his movies have like like he directed the the original top gun to um he got some more uh success in the fucking mid or mid 2000s with movies like man on fire uh he directed like crimson tide uh he oh my god i could go on all day with this shit uh like he basically has like a never-ending list of like fun movies that he like initially it's, made in the it's all right dude he he directed the last boy scout that's the most important thing yeah yeah, yeah but uh yeah basically uh i'm not sure if uh aside from last boy scout you guys know any, or you know particular I mean, fan you know, of you know. yeah i don't know i i just like last boy scout <laughs> last boy scout <laughs> That's good. It's a good movie. <laughs> That's all I got. I don't, I'm That's really not. Happy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I like Top Gun. Did Top did he? he yeah. It's gonna be yeah. the shortest conversation ever. Great thing. <laughs> Such kind of like a bland because it's kind of like a bland director to like you know. Last Boy Scout. Like movie. Yeah. Last. Uh, last Boy Scout. <laughs> Keep going back and forth saying the Last Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> I um, really, it's just because i really like that movie i'm not trying to bag on tony scott at all it's just i yeah. really really i that's uh, clearly my favorite tony scott movie <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you can name like all like these great movies and it's like yeah but uh the last boy scout uh this... <laughs> yeah but what about the last boy scout <laughs> how does the last boy scout rate on your finger scale <laughs> <laughs> they come back to you you have like the little cat puppet you're talking the last boy scout <laughs> i'm just gonna start walking up to people and saying tattered gut like that's <laughs> the same thing your wife asked me <laughs> you're funny you're funny for a guy about to take a bullet it's like after fucking your wife i'll take two. <laughs> oh my god but yeah, uh, not to downplay the guy or anything, like because I know we just been talking about the last Boy Scout, but he's directed a lot of really good stuff. 
anywho, like just to keep this going faster, Mark, do you want to go on to yours? Well, Chris. Hold up, man. Don't skip me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit. Sorry. Oh, I just I just want to drop a name. I just want to drop uh, Kevin Smith. Yeah. Kevin yeah, fucking yeah. Smith, bro. He's great, man. <laughs> Yo, dude. Oh, Every man. fucking thing, dude. I mean, I guess, I mean, Jersey Dusk girl. is not my favorite, but <laughs> Dusk is not also not my favorite. Um, Jersey Girl, I don't think it deserves all the shit it gets. Jersey Girl's not bad. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's an alright. I, I think didn't chasing see. Amy is like amazing. That's tops. Classic. I think he, I think he's underrated in terms of uh, dramatic kind of because when you think of like the Kevin Smith, you think of like the View Us Universe and. Jay most of those are just known as like, mostly yeah like j like kind of more just fun i mean despite how well written and how good the dialogue is in all those movies and how mm-hmm. good they are at like connecting like you know mm-hmm. um i don't know like like you said dude chasing amy is like that's a that really great movie it's even so like fucking, even like the sillier movies he's made have like really good character arcs like i mean mall rats yeah <laughs> But still, that has like a fun like little arc there with especially with Brody, like you know. Mallrats is, in my opinion, and again, I it's. You do it. I I can watch that movie like yeah, a million. Times I like I can't time. find any faults with that movie. It's just so good. Yeah. Like yeah, all yeah. every single character in that movie serves a purpose, and they're all likable. Um, especially Jason. Yeah, I mean, like the dialogue, though, all all the back and forth in that movie is just so like. Mm-hmm. Like that's a, it's almost like a SLC punk how the dialogue like even if you have no idea what's going on you're kind of like transfixed by what they're talking oh, yeah. about. It's just people um, hanging out. Like I love it. It's oh, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's such a great movie. Those are Hell, those are some of the best. Some of the best kind Hell, of movies. Hell hath no fury like a woman scored for Sega. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dogma like I think is a really underrated movie of his. Dogma. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, love, yeah. I think that's. Dude, really I saw that in the uh, theaters with my sister. It got protested was, so hard was, when it came out. Well, yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, no mess around with God's America, yeah. dude. That scene in the beginning where Janine Garofalo's like getting because she works in an abortion clinic, and like there's a bunch of like Christian protesters following her, and like some guy gets in her face, he's like, "You're going to hell, you fucking baby killer!" And she's like, "Holy shit, is that the Pope?" And they're all like, "Stop and look, like what?" <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's dude that movie is fucking hilarious it's great yeah george, yeah. george carlin in that too like his yeah. i think yeah. uh his ensembles are the best too oh he's always got great movie. actors in his movies oh yeah yeah they always work so like good off each other even if you hear like uh like in real life like so and so didn't get along so well like it always comes off in the movies like yeah. exactly how it's supposed to yeah uh but like you said yeah dogma was fucking awesome um Dude, uh, everybody always talks about. Obviously, it's a great movie, Clerks, but I really like Clerks too. Also, it's good. Clerks I like Clerks too. too. I think it's funny. Clerks two is very good. Yeah. Jane Silent yeah. Bob it's... Strike Back and Jane Clerks Silent Bob's yeah. reboot is—they're both great. He's—he's he's good at making so movies that get even better. The, like the more times you watch them, because mm-hmm. any yeah. Kevin Smith movie, like I'd enjoy it initially, but I'd enjoy it so much more on repeated viewings. Yeah. Um. Again, the only Kevin Smith movie I really don't like that much is is Tusk, um, just because it just oh, gets, uh, it gets long. It's, like, so... it's that's a, probably the most random fucking movie. Yeah. I've well, ever I seen. mean, like, like I, think... I get it. Like, it's funny because it's based off of a podcast that they did, and like, if you understand that, then the movie's a lot funnier. But it was this thing of like, my friend showed me Tusk and was like, "This movie's great, isn't it?" And I was watching, it and I'm like, "This movie fucking sucks." And then just like the okay, further just... it got, I'm like, "This is terrible." And then he told me all about the podcast, and I'm like, "Well, I don't listen to the podcast. Why would I enjoy this?" <laughs> I think my it's like saying it's based on this conversation. <laughs> I think my two least favorite Kevin Smith movies are Tusk and Yoga Hosers, for sure. But yeah, like, but it's so fucking, they're, they're, they're just both so in the same bizarre. universe. They're so bizarre. Uh, I wasn't a, uh, I wasn't a fan of uh, Cop Out either. You know. Well, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, Cop Out. He he had a lot of problems with Bruce Willis and I Cop that Out. Was be better. I really thought that was going to be better. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Again, like he's 
at the time he was like, yeah, dude, uh, Bruce Willis was just kind of a dick and kind of unresponsive when I tried to direct him. But yeah. like looking back on what we know now about uh, Bruce Willis, you know. Well, that doesn't excuse it from like 20 years ago. Oh, oh yeah. no, no. I mean, well, I mean, it wasn't that long, yeah. but it's like that, that mark, that for me, that kind of like marked the end of like Bruce Willis, like the Bruce Willis, like we grew up with, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of, yeah, because like, yeah, I mean, cause he was making a joke that. of himself. He was playing a parody of himself in that movie. Yeah, it was, but it's like, it like, his heart didn't seem in it at all. No. Yeah. Like Nicolas Cage does now. Yeah, yeah dude, Nicolas Cage. Literally. <laughs> um, yeah, no, dude, Kevin Smith is, is great. He's He's definitely an underrated director and screenwriter. Oh, yeah. Like, he's written, like, Flash yeah. and stuff and everything, too he's a brilliant like public speaker too like in turn like he's yeah. basically almost like his uh evenings or whatever the evenings with kevin smith like those I are all like really, that guy talk really forever forever well he has the most chill sounding voice of all time too he just sounds yeah. like a dude you know like he just sounds yeah. like a dude that you would just oh, like to sit down and yeah. talk with yeah. like yeah <laughs> now he smokes like copious amounts of marijuana yeah. Good dude. Really he, have, like, he, he, uh, survived, he survived a widowmaker. Oh like that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, good for him for like losing all that weight too. You know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's a fucking man. Hell yeah. Um so uh <clears throat> so I guess we'll go on to a uh, third third director that we think deserves uh some love. And um, mine is Wes Anderson. Um, I think Wes Anderson is a very acquired taste. Um, like, I think it's sort of you either like his movies or you don't. Um, but I think, and similar to the Safety brothers, like Wes Anderson has been able to kind of cultivate and create his own style. And like when you watch his movies from all the way back to like bottle rocket and rushmore and then up to now with like <clears throat> life aquatic and grand budapest hotel and like isle of dogs and stuff um this dude has just mastered quirky in the like the most fun ways like his movies just feel so fun they feel like they're in this world of like bright colors and symmetry that I want to be in. Um, you know, I think, you know, again, when you watch movies like Bottle Rocket or Rushmore and they're just kind of just about these dudes doing stuff. And then you watch like Royal Tenenbaums or Life Aquatic and they're these really eclectic people in these really weird situations. And the movie just feels like this crazy, like esoteric madhouse um, you know, and then you get even, and then you get to like a stop motion stuff with like fantastic Mr. Fox and, um, Isle of Dogs and those are just super fun. And then you have his like coming of age movies with like Moonrise Kingdom and that Moonrise Kingdom is probably my favorite Wes Anderson movie. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I think he's like, if you want to be happy, watch Wes Anderson movies. His his little worlds, his little dollhouse worlds that he creates are the so great. The sun is always shining in Wes Anderson's world. <laughs> huh? I said the sun is always shining in his world. Dude, it is. And it's always this like weird little artsy sun. It's always going to be sitting in the corner. The thing, like, yeah, right. like even, even like when you think about it, like movies like Bottle Rocket, it's about a bunch of guys like planning a fucking like heist basically, yeah. but it's, even that's like so like so like you said like quirky and like it's the goofiest heist like ever fucking like put on film basically uh, mark i thought you're i thought you actually said paul ws anderson and i was gonna ask why you didn't talk about resident evil but oh no 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 event horizon no. sir <laughs> no hey I'm... man don't don't talk shit about it you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't mention resident evils one through seven <laughs> Paul W. Anderson. He did Mortal Kombat. Didn't he? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, he, he did he's the first like Mortal Kombat. Handful. Yeah, first Mortal Kombat. Uh, like we said, Event Horizon, which I wasn't shitting on. That's a good movie. No, yeah. Um, I think Event Horizon is probably the best movie that he ever did. Yeah. 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 
Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, but Wes yeah. Anderson, though, is, um, you know, even, like, Rushmore is, like, Jason Schwartzman is, like, so unlikable, yet you love to watch him. Um, yeah, he's, he's just a little dipshit in that movie. Yeah, like, I love, like, the, yeah, and, like, my favorite scene in that movie is, you know, him talking to Luke Wilson, and he's just like, these are OR scrub, scrubs. Oh, are they? I just, I love that one. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so great and then i mean the fact that he always kind of has this sort of recurring cast of characters with like if a new wes anderson movie's coming out you can all but guarantee that bill murray and owen wilson are gonna be yeah. in it. jason yeah. schwartzman will probably be in it Adrian Luke wilson may or may not be in it um willem dafoe will probably be in it um you know, it's, you know, he, the casting is always perfect. The way the character, I mean, I think Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of, <laughs> it's so hard to watch that movie and not have the biggest smile on your face when you watch it because it's just so silly. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing about him is that like you watch his movies and you're just like, that's silly. And and I think we need more of that sort of in a lot of cinema. It's just somebody that you could watch and just be kind of irreverent, like kind yeah, of. you know, just be like, yeah, this is really quirky and eclectic, and this is like hipster cinema, but it's great. It's good. Yeah, though. I'm I mean, very, I'm very upset. Um, I didn't know this until today that in an hour, Jason X is going to be playing at the Amherst Theater, and I'm very upset. That I'm not there. Yeah, I would have loved to go. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I didn't find out until like today. Otherwise, I would have been like, yeah, I'll fucking do that. But yeah, dude, if I had known earlier today, I would have gone. I would have gotten myself a ticket. I'm only like a mile away from it. They do some shit like called Thursday Night Terrors. And like once a month, they have like, they just have a random horror movie and it's like an event there. Oh, shit. Damn, yeah. If I had known earlier today, I definitely would have. Chris, that sucks on so many levels. (laughs) (laughs) You got it. Chris got the joke. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you fucker. Uh, Little Jason X in humor there. (laughs) Oh, uh, is it my turn? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Um,. Uh, I think my other choice was that I'm going to go with just to mention now is uh, James Gunn uh, in terms of especially with uh, modern day directors. Uh, yeah. literally, um, I, he has like a background with uh, trauma. Um, he made like a lot of like kind of fun, silly shit there. And he's kind of eventually worked his way up all the fucking way up to the MCU and like the DCU. Um his early work movies like super and like slither those are both fucking awesome movies if you've never checked those out uh That's but amazing. i do think he's like kind of hit the magic formula when it comes to like mixing comedy and uh serious like uh like comic book action like type of movies he I also think the did Guardian, the the movies. Movies. It, he he wrote them right that he didn't direct them though right <laughs> I think he might have directed them. Let me check. But I thought he, he well, I know that he wrote them. Wrote them. I know what that movies? he wrote them. He definitely wrote them. Um, what movies? What are we talking? Oh about? no, no, he directed. Yeah. Er, no, he just wrote them. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He just wrote them. Yeah. Well, he his he's written like a lot. His name's like on a lot of stuff though too. Um, well, he's a big producer. Yeah. I want to. I want to say though his last two projects, uh, The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker both fucking phenomenal to me uh fucking suicide squad was fucking just everything a suicide squad movie should have been peacemaker was fucking hilarious uh yeah i think like the dude like when it comes to like modern day uh like directors i think if i see his name on something it's like all right i'm at least gonna check it out slither is slither is definitely probably my favorite James Gunn movie. I fucking yeah. love Slither, dude. And it's got my boy Michael Rooker in it. it. It's just pretty great. It's super fucking uh, great. 
Oh yeah, Nathan Fillion. Uh, Nathan it's Fillion. got like it's got like all his like regulars kind of in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Slither like Slither. The th- the cool thing about Slither is that like it has like the same uh card going for it that movies like uh like even like Monster Squad and Night of the Creeps had like where it's basically a monster mash. Like there's not just oh what happened? Oh, you guys still there? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. I just see a little black screen. Oh, um, but no, the, like that, that movie is basically like it's not just like one like horror or like one like simple horror aspect going for it. It's like a whole fucking world of them. Uh, that movie, have you seen Super with uh, Rain Wilson and uh, uh, yeah. now, the now Elliot Page? Uh, Elliot, yeah, with Elliot. That's there. Another, that's another one. Yeah, that's another uh, really good one there too. That scene yeah, in that movie where he's like, he's he's standing in like a fucking movie line, and he's like, you can tell he has like extreme social awkwardness because like some like guy lets some girl that he knows like cut ahead, and he's just sitting there like no cutters, and the guy like gets in his face or whatever, and then it shows him like getting dressed in his car, and he literally assaults them both with a wrench, uh, <laughs> like uh, like he. I think uh, he's probably more now. I mean, thankfully, he's doing uh, R-rated stuff again because I, I think that's where he really excels. Uh, yeah, definitely, like, definitely. Like, yeah, like definitely. Yeah, definitely. James Gunn is like my uh, modern day favorite, um, uh, like filmmaker when it comes to like these big, like you know, movies that are supposed to be quote unquote fun. So, yeah, that's, that's my opinion on that's my. Uh, Essay on James Gunn. My essay on James Gunn. <laughs> uh, like standing up in class. Where where am I gonna go now? See, I'm just going off the top of the head, and now I'm fucking caught. Uh, I know the director, like the movie of. It's not hard. Uh, you know. I'll talk, let's talk about uh let's talk about James Cameron. James Cameron? Okay. Aside from Avatar, because I could give a fuck about Avatar. Uh, <sighs> Avatar, yeah. yeah. But James but... Cameron, man. Just dropping the summer blockbuster action movies all up on us. Like Dude, he's fuck. Michael Bay dude, he's Michael Bay's intelligent brother. <laughs> he was like Michael. he was <laughs> He was like, oh, did you think Alien was too serious and boring? Well, guess what? I'm making Aliens, baby, and I'm smacking you in the face with it. Like, Fuck yeah. dude, Aliens, people like Aliens more than the original. They, nobody, like, people regard it as a classic, but Aliens is the one that people are most recognize, I'm sure. And uh, let's not forget Terminator and the best summer blockbuster of all time, fucking Terminator 2. Judgment Day, yeah. Judgment Day, man. This guy yeah. consistently knocked it out of the park. I mean, lots of people like Avatar, but I fuck, I don't, he, I don't consider that anything, dude. Uh, I think in it's underrated by James Cameron terms, but uh, True Lies too. That's another like crazy fun True fucking movie. Pretty great. I, like that. I love oh, that movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, still like considered like a like a hit and everything, but. Uh, like you said, dude, he hasn't even like you know we're shitting on Avatar. Even that's like still like worth like a big like cinematic watch and everything. Just like it's how clearly fun- something because people love it. I mean, it's just not my. I just don't think it's not my that's favorite. Not my bag, yeah, what? The, <laughs> no, I said that's not my bag, baby. The uh, <laughs> what do you call no. it though? Uh, I've never. He's like one of those directors, though. Like you've never seen a bad James Cameron movie. Like right. and like, dude, like Titanic. Like, come on, if you can make that movie that fucking everybody on the planet has basically seen, like, I'm just pretty in the sure. Year that it came out. I'm pretty sure Titanic is still the highest grossing movie of all time, adjusted for inflation. I dude. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Jesus, dude. Like, I remember when that came out. Like, uh. Like that's all they would talk about. Well, like, it, on, like, it had the Lego longest for, uh, for theatrical run of 15. any movie of all time. I know that it has the longest theatrical run of all time. Yo, near far wherever you are. 
Yeah. <laughs> that I I like that movie. It's a good movie. Yeah, he made really a movie. Fucking, he made a long, interesting movie about the sinking of a fucking ship, dude. Like this shit should. I mean, it's just you're like, hey, the, I, this fucking ship hit an iceberg and sank, and all these people died. But like. I don't know if you're really thinking about that too much until it actually happens, the way he's, like, spinning the stories and shit on the ship. It's, uh, he fucking films it so brilliantly, like, the entire, like, ship sinking. Like, you're in, yeah. you're inside the ship, you're outside of it while it's fucking, yeah. like, making the nosedive. Yep. It's got the same uh, thing going forth that, like, Princess Bride had, though, like, where it's, like, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got, like obviously like the good romance story it's got like fucking a disaster movie fucking scale to it with like all the huge fucking like you know disaster it's, got billy, it's got billy zane who keeps his billy women zane, yeah man he, he he keeps his women in check with a fucking hand all right can... <laughs> <clears throat> billy zane's not fucking around with this movie am i the only one who thought she left with the wrong guy there i mean <laughs> you know say what you would <laughs> Say what you will about Jack, but... <laughs> uh, just, just so you guys know, we got seven minutes left. Uh, All right. Uh, well, very important. I mean, we can wrap it up. Uh, well, fucking... I, mean, I saw well, Bill. Mark, Mark really didn't say anything about James Cameron. If he... Yeah. Yeah, Mark, you got something against James Cameron? Yeah. No, I don't have anything yeah. against James see, Cameron. I'm just not the biggest on. fan of James Cameron movies. Not that I think he's a bad director. I just it's like you're in an elevator. Mark even, even made a song about James Cameron. Come on, Mark. I'm not Mark, in an elevator. I like James Cameron. I still like, like, compliments. <laughs> like I still like I like Titanic. Um, I like Aliens. You know, game over, man. Game over. Like I, I you know. I love James Cameron. I got nothing bad to say about him, but I just don't have that much to say about him. Right, right. Mark, Mark, I'm just picturing you stuck in an elevator with James Cameron and you just start making backhand compliments. It was like, yeah, aliens. Uh, it, was, it was fine. It was fine. It was- yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I personally like Alien more, but it's just me. I mean, you know, it's it's one great movie compared to another, so. You know. Yeah, but also, it's, I'm not big into sci-fi. I mean, aliens, like, Alien is fucking great. Yeah, it's just that he took he took the concept, made it a completely different movie, but somehow it felt it felt the same. Yeah, he he took it and turned it into an action movie. Yeah, which I mean is fine. It's still like it's still a good movie. Like a great, like a great action movie. Yeah, yeah, this is what it is, dude. Oh yeah. First Alien is still one of the best haunted house movies ever. Just happens to take place in a spaceship. So. <laughs> it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, we'll wrap it up. Anybody, anybody got anything? Anything they want to talk about, real quick? See the everyone, sadness. Everyone here oh, yeah. needs to watch everything, everywhere, all at once, and Chip and Dale. Watch Chip and Dale. Oh yeah, I gotta watch Chip and Dale. So. Watch uh, Chip and definitely, Dale. Definitely watch the sadness. Watch Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Um, everything everywhere yes, all at once everything everywhere all at once please watch that first if you're gonna best movie of the year one, for sure you're oh. on that. Uh, fucking it, everything awesome. yeah uh next week we are doing uh studios so get ready for a lot of a24 talk on my, oh, on my end <laughs> you're like hey we're doing a we're gonna, we're gonna talk about studios uh, you guys don't get to talk the whole episode about A24, and I'm going to give a thesis. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, you know, again, like yeah, always. I'd like to talk about Warner Brothers. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so, you know, thanks to anyone and everyone that watches. You know, we're, Appreciate it. You know, Appreciate we're getting back more on a semi-consistent yeah. recording schedule, so. Definitely. Um, you know, we got a lot of plans and stuff coming for this YouTube channel to hopefully get some more viewers and, and everything like that. And um, who knows? Maybe on Friday night or Saturday or something, I might make a little video myself about this Johnny Depp case because I have literally dude, been like, dude, hell yeah, dude! I've been so into it, just like bullet points, watching all these different people, and um, I got a lot to say about it. So maybe we'll see. We'll see. Awesome. 
Uh, or a yeah. Godzilla, but grumpy. 